Hello, everyone. Welcome to the White House. We're so delighted to have everyone in the room and on the live stream. I'm Arathi Prabhakar. I'm the President's Advisor on Science and Technology. I lead the Office of Science and Technology Policy here at the White House, and I get to co-chair the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology. <clears throat> we are here today to highlight two specific actions that came out of the President's AI executive order that he signed at the end of October last year. One is a new report from PCAST on how AI is changing scientific research. And the other one is the first awards from the NAIR pilot, the National AI Research Resource Pilot. And I really want to thank Director Panchanathan, his team from NSF, um, on launching the NAIR pilot. Uh, this, you all know what an essential step this is for building the AI future that we need. And I also want to thank Professor Tao and Professor Green, who are here from PCAST, uh, for leading the PCAST working group. Um, the, that new report from PCAST really shines a light on how AI is transforming every field of research. And I want to start by giving us some context for these two actions that we're talking about today. President Biden describes AI as the most consequential technology of our times. He always recognizes that it brings both promise and peril, that they, they travel in pairs, they come together. And he and the vice president were clear from the very beginning that we have to put AI on the right track for the American people. And what that means is managing AI's risks so that we can seize its benefits. And I, I really want to underscore that. It, it's, this is about managing the risks in order to capture those benefits. So hold that thought because it, it really is key to the work that we're announcing and talking about today. AI's applications, as everyone here knows, are extraordinarily broad uh, and each of those applications has a bright side and a dark side. We know that AI can amplify creativity and that it can warp, on the other hand, it can warp our information environment and it can create risks to safety and security. We know that AI can achieve astonishing efficiency and scale but we also know that it can exacerbate discrimination and that it can destroy privacy. We know that it can boost productivity, but we also know that it can hollow out and even eliminate jobs. So that's what we're grappling with. How that AI story turns out depends on our very human choices, and that's why it's been such a priority for this president. AI is moving very fast, it's very broad, and those are also the characteristics of the actions that the president's taken. That includes the first ever voluntary commitments from AI companies. It includes this landmark executive order that we've been talking about on AI, in which the president said to us, pull every lever under existing law to make sure we get AI on the right track. It includes ongoing work with Congress on a bipartisan basis for the legislation that we all know will also be needed. And it includes working with allies and partners around the world, uh, including a first ever UN General Assembly resolution on AI that uh, the United States initiated and that 122 other company, countries co-sponsored, I think a great example of global leadership on AI. Now, the reason to do all of this work of managing AI's risks, the reason we're working so hard to do that is to be able to use it responsibly to achieve our great aspirations. The reason to build a stable platform is so that you can stand on it to reach for the stars. And that's really what today's announcements are all about. These are two specific actions that the president called for in his executive order. The new report from PCAST that Terry will tell you about in just a moment is about how AI is changing science in ways that open new pathways to address our major societal challenges. That report grew out of a wonderful discussion that uh, PCAST had with President Biden back in September. Um, it, at that meeting, he heard about how AI was transforming three specific areas, weather prediction, materials design, and cosmology, very wide range of different research areas. And he got to dig into those issues with some of the leading experts who are doing this work uh, in, in, you know, in their day jobs across all these very different fields. It was a terrific meeting. This new PCAST report uh, delves into those and many other fields of research to show what's going to be required to, to realize this potential for AI in research how AI is going to change the practice of research itself, change the nature of science, 
uh, and to really show us the dazzling possibilities that are ahead if and when we can get this right. And that's, that's really what it's all about. So that's the PCAST report. NAIR, of course, everyone here knows, is about the research infrastructure that we need to go after these immense new possibilities. NAIR is the National AI Research Resource. It's an initiative to enable a wide community of researchers to drive AI forward. Of course, most of the big advances that we've seen in recent years have come from companies. And you know, we all know that they're putting many, many, many billions of dollars into building new AI models. But for the AI future that we need, we also need to make sure that a much broader set of researchers have access to both the compute and the data that's necessary. And that's what NAIR is all about. Fully establishing NAIR is going to take significant funding, and we're happy to see that Congress has initiated action. We're hoping that that full funding will be achieved. But NSF and its partners across government are not sitting around waiting, and, and it, it's been terrific to see them get going and uh, in this, come together across government and initiate a NAIR pilot. Uh, they won commitments from a host of private companies to provide compute. I think that's important for NAIR, and I think it also points to a new, the emergence of a new kind of partnership that we're going to be building public and private together to do this work in this era of AI. So that's a promising start uh, right there. They also, that was with the companies to get the resources, but of course they also called out to researchers for their best ideas about advancing AI. And today, uh, NAIR is announcing the very first awards under this pilot. So it's an extremely exciting time for AI and for AI research. I want to finish by circling back to where I started, which was about AI's risks and benefits. And a question I get asked all the time, I, I'm sure you all get it too, is, is posed as the question of the conflict between safety and innovation. And I actually just think it's the wrong framing of the situation because Building and using AI is how we are going to understand its risks, and it's how we're going to learn how to make more and more effective and safe and trustworthy AI systems. So I, it, our job really is to be vigorous and nimble in managing AI's risks, and at the same time to be vigorous and nimble in harnessing AI for its benefits. These things are going to go together. President Biden finished his State of the Union message this year uh, by saying, let's build the future together. And I can't think of a more exciting invitation than that. So thank you all very much for this work on AI that is going to start building our future together. And with that, I get to turn it over now to Terry Tao to tell you about the PCAST report. Thank you. Thank you so much, Adi. It's, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, so on behalf of PCAST, which is the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, I'm very happy to announce the recent publication of our report, uh, Supercharging Research, Harnessing Artificial Intelligence to Meet Global Challenges. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, PCAST is an independent federal advisory committee composed of individuals from industry, academia, and nonprofit organizations with a wide range of perspectives and expertise. It is the only body of advisors outside the federal government charged with making science, technology, and innovation policy uh, recommendations to the President and White House. Uh, so as Artie already mentioned, back in September, uh, PCAST met with the President uh, about areas where AI is opening up um, new frontiers in research. Uh, that meeting sparked uh, a requirement in his executive order um, a month later in October on the safe, secure, and trustworthy development on the use of AI. And it directed PCAST to report on the potential role of AI technologies in tackling major societal and global challenges. So in our report, um, our findings were that AI is an extremely powerful and promising technology, which, if used responsibly, can supercharge scientific research and empower and enable a broad community of scientists to address many important problems. For instance, uh, AI tools are already identifying promising candidates for, say, future materials. Um, uh, one day, hopefully, they will, they will um, uh, be used to locate uh, candidates for, say, room temperature superconductors or new uh, materials for batteries um, or uh, new antibiotics or new therapies. They can radically accelerate the modeling of important systems, uh, ranging all the way from an individual protein up to the entire universe, as Artie already briefly mentioned. Um, they can process extremely complex types of real-world messy data, 
um, allowing for new ways to increase access to personalized healthcare, social services, or higher education. Um, the application I'm most excited about, actually, is that AI can enable um, really novel and broad types of collaboration between scientists and even uh, between scientists and, and the general public. You can find detail of all these applications in our full report. Uh, but again, as RT mentioned already, uh, AI technologies also have weaknesses as well as strengths. They can be inaccurate, they can be biased, they can be resource intensive, very, very resource intensive, uh, or proprietary. Um, in order to fully realize the benefits of AI and to mitigate these potential harms, we will need three important and interlinked ingredients. So firstly, these technologies should be used to empower and complement human scientists rather than replace them. Secondly, scientists will need to embrace a culture of responsible AI use where the, the outputs of AI are human supervised and externally validated. Biases and potential uncertainties are quantified. Models and training are disclosed. And, it, um, and privacy and security of sensitive data are protected. <laughs> Finally, basic AI infrastructure, such as open source models and data sets, computing resources, standards, and best practices need to be in place and available to the broader scientific community. So this is where NAIR comes in. The NAIR pilot is an important first step in building this AI infrastructure. It will empower researchers by democratizing access to research quality AI tools. And I believe it also play a key role in developing a culture of responsible AI use. PCAST hopes that NAIR, uh, as, as the NAIR program develops and grows, it will be the foundation for many, many transformative um, future projects. For instance, developing lightweight AI tools optimized for scientific use or comprehensive models of such important systems as the human cell or the entire planet Earth. You know, we should think big. You know, being responsible for AI tools doesn't prevent us from also being bold. So in conclusion, PCAST is honored that the president has prioritized this topic and has met twice with PCAST already to allow us to share our enthusiasm for the, the opportunities that, the, that AI can provide. Uh, very shortly, we will see how the NAIR pilot that was just launched by the President's Executive Order is already beginning to help us seize all these opportunities. And I'm very excited to see what NAIR will name next. Thank you. Good morning to all of you. My name is Setu Raman Panchanathan. That's the most difficult thing that you'll hear in the morning. <laughs> so I put an AI on it and said, how can we simplify it to punch? So, <clears throat> so good to have all of you here today. Uh, NSF is very, very delighted uh, to be able to uh, you know, participate in this event organized by the White House. I want to express my gratitude to OSTP Director Arti Prabhakar, who has been a huge champion in terms of advancing how we move forward at speed and at scale. But you know, it all starts, as Arti said, with President Biden, who has taken a personal interest, and that's very exciting. And I always say that the executive order when I go around and talk about AI, I say the executive order has been very crisp, clear, and it has charged each agency with what we need to do and set up a timeline for that too, which, is, um, which I find very exciting. So for NSF, among the many taskings that we had was the tasking of wanting to develop a NAIR, National AI Research Resource, pilot in 90 days. Now, 90-day tasking is not easy. You first have to digest it. And then you got to figure out, what am I going to do? And then, then get on with the business of doing something. And in doing so, I, I say that NSF is very blessed to have amazing leaders and that you get to work with. Katie Antipas is an amazing leader who then took the charge and worked with many folks at NSF to be able to build this within 90 days. And I was just overwhelmed when I saw what happened with the outcome. We have 25 non-governmental partners, 25 non-governmental partners, and 12 federal agencies who all came together, including Department of Energy, National Institute of Health, and a whole host of agencies that came together and said, this is our collective interest in building this together. And the 25 non-governmental partners includes NVIDIA, Microsoft, Amazon, and Paul Allen Institute for AI, and a whole host of others for whom we are very, very grateful. So I want to come here to express my gratitude to all the partners 
who have invested and co-invested in this, because without you, we would not be able to advance at the pace, at speed and scale, as I say. And that we are able to now launch 35 new projects because of that. You're going to hear about some of the projects today. And the projects range in terms of what AI areas that we touch in. It could be a language model safety. It could be about AI security and privacy. It could be about applications ranging from permafrost monitoring, or medical imaging, or agriculture pest detection. It ranges, all these applications and the core issues in AI that one needs to pay attention to. So you will see among these 35 projects, unbelievable span in terms of geography, in terms of ideas, core ideas, as well as application interests. And I can tell you, the appetite is pretty strong. We have 50 projects which have been reviewed as positive already. But we don't have the resources to be able to scale to the 50 projects yet. And that's why the partnerships of all of you is exceedingly important. And for this, if you're wondering, I need a piece of notes, I have that. If you're wondering, this guy doesn't have any notes. So the partners include Microsoft, NVIDIA, Amazon Web Services, Anthropic, Cerebrus, Eleuther AI, um, Glock, Hugging Face, OpenAI, OpenMind, Sambanova, and Vokerium. Is that right? Good. Was, was it OK? OK. You know, you never want to leave a partner. So, but this is, I still say, this is just a beginning. There is so much need, and so we need more resources to be brought to the table. So today is not only about celebrating the rapid launch and the partnerships that have come together to make that possible, and the next phase that is being announced right now, the next pilot opportunity that is being announced today to expand this all across the country. But remember the word pilot, which means that it calls for a full-scale implementation rather soon. And for that full-scale implementation, I'm grateful to Congress for working on this in a bipartisan manner, both on the House side and the Senate side, to be able to have the AI caucuses advance this idea of how do we get more resources. Very excited by that. And then I tell you, whatever money that we might get from the federal government, and Dalia is here, she will tell you, that it will still not be enough because people are going to be knocking on the doors and saying, we need more, we need more. The way you scale is through partnerships and with what all of you are going to make possible. And so please, please talk to NSF, please talk to us and other agencies, and that's how we are going to be able to scale. Let us know, let's work together. Because at the end of the day, AI, yes, it is accessible infrastructure for advancing ideas, AI. But the most important thing, it's about accessibility and inclusion. And I'm so delighted that we have historically black colleges and universities, Hispanic-serving institutions, and a whole range of minority-serving institutions, those institutions that don't typically get a chance at being able to advance their ideas. Because this, is, this, should, never be, this should never be about the haves and the have-nots, because ideas are democratized, which means the, acts, the, act, the infrastructure should be democratized, and therefore, democratizing AI requires us all to work together so that we might unleash all ideas, all talent, because at the end of the day, the ideas and then build the talent. The ideas and talent is what is going to make this successful. So let's make sure, let's endeavor today as a team, as a group, so that we will work together to make sure that we are going to advance talent and ideas, innovation, everywhere across our nation, across the broad socioeconomic demographic, across the rich diversity of the nation, and um, the, the, the vast geography of our nation. And that's what we need to do. NSF is committed to that. And I know our partners are committed to that. We welcome you all to join together to make that happen. Thank you so much. I came here to express my gratitude on behalf of NSF. Thank you. So one more round of applause for our three wonderful speakers. And thank you for joining us today. This concludes the live stream portion of our event.